you are most welcome to this channel today we are going to be discussing physics our topic is light energy so we start with the definition so light is a form of energy that travels in a straight line at a speed of 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second in a vacuum or you can also say 300 million meters per second in a vacuum so this is the specific speed of light in an empty space or vacuum as a form of energy light is measured in joules so you know all energies whether kinetic potential light energy sound energy are all measured in joules the properties of light or before i mention the properties of light at least we should remember that light has got two main uh, importance the first one being that it enables vision and the second one being the ability to support photosynthesis that is the process by means of which plants are able to manufacture their own food now we can look at the properties of light light is an electromagnetic wave it means that it falls within the category of waves that we call uh, electromagnetic spectrum waves that form electromagnetic spectrum they include x-rays beta rays gamma rays etc there is a topic for future discussion so we'll see it then two according to the law of rectilinear propagation of light we know light travels in a straight line and there are experiments to actually prove this using cardboards and the candle and so on we've already mentioned the speed of light so we move on light can be reflected so by reflection we mean that it is capable of bouncing back from a surface or from a reflecting surface so we can take this for a mirror when light rays fall on this mirror so this is our incident ray it bounces off from it so we call this the reflected ray this is an example of a reflecting surface is a mirror so you can take this for our mirror so this process is called ref reflection now another property is it can be refracted by refracted we mean that it can change in direction and this happens when it is traveling from one medium into another medium of different optical density so let's take this as a boundary separating two media so we have a light ray initially taking this course so if it were to continue this way we expect it to go this way there is the course however because the medium one and two are different density the light ray can gear off to this direction so this is the incident ray and this becomes the refracted ray so there is been a change in direction through a certain angle theta and that is exactly what we mean by refraction of light so it can change in each direction as it travels from one medium into another medium as when their densities their optical densities are obviously different lights undergoes interference and it also undergoes diffraction so let's first of all take diffraction it becomes easier for us to discuss interference whilst discussing uh, diffraction so let me create some room here 
So I have a slate, a small opening. So what we see over here are two holes. We have two holes here. As light ray tries to enter through this hole and through that hole or an aperture, the sort of spread out, the spreading out is what we refer to as diffraction. You can clearly see that whilst the diffract that is spread out, there is a region where the meat, the meeting point or the, the meeting region is a place where interference occurs. So interference occurs in waves in general when they tend to superimpose or they meet normally after being diffracted and that is what we mean by diffraction so these are the properties of light now we come to the sources of lights look at the sources there are two main sources of light that is the categorization it can either be bodies can be luminous or non-luminous luminous bodies produce their own light example is the sun and also we have the stars let's remember or not forget that the moon is not a luminous body in fact the moon is an opaque body it does not allow light to pass through it so it is not a luminous body among the luminous bodies we have two categories we have natural sources which includes as we said sun and deep sea animals like firefly deep sea fish and so on we also have the sea animal you can see it clearly here they are also light producing sources jellyfish these are all examples the artificial ones include electric bulbs candles and the rest now we come to non-luminous bodies non-luminous bodies cannot produce their own lights they are unable to produce their own light so how do we see them we see them by illumination when they get illuminated that means that when light from an external source falls on them example how do we see the moon if you go back to our diagram here so this is our sun and that is our moon here so how does the moon become visible so we assume that this is where the observer is light ray from the sun hits the moon and the moon reflects the light into the eye when that happens then the moon becomes visible or else we can't see the moon so that is how we see human beings plants and so on in fact it is the reason why uh, plants leaves may appear green you see that they reflect all uh, components of white light uh, they reflect they absorb all components of white light and they reflect the green light that is how we see them among the classes of illuminated bodies or non-luminal bodies are transparent bodies that allow large amount of light to pass through them example is air and glass translucent bodies allow only a small amount of light to pass through them example is a smeared paper then opaque bodies they do not allow light to pass through them at all and therefore they can only be seen when light falls on them example include wood the human body stones and the rest this is where we end today's video i'm very happy to have come your way with it and i hope you enjoyed it do well to subscribe to my channel and to, until next time see you and stay safe bye